All right. Thanks, Mike. Well, I promised to bring this back around full circle to manure and composting. Uh, so, and I know I'm standing in the, in, the, in the way of dinner. So I think it's pretty common to know that with livestock uh, enterprises, especially horses, feed is usually the greatest expenditure of most operations. And interestingly enough, if we just look at the average adult horse eating 2.5% of its body weight, and let's assume it has no pasture and is eating 100% hay diet, that adult 1,000-pound horse is going to consume about 4.5 tons of hay each year. Now, of course, if you're feeding grain and they have access to pasture, it'll be less. But assuming 100% hay diet, 4.5 tons of hay per year. So just kind of keep that in mind. We know that hay loss can occur at any point along the process, from baling to storage to feeding. And if you look at losses from both storage and feeding, it can exceed 40% looking at research data. So what we really want to do is focus on how can we reduce that amount of waste when it comes to feeding. And one of the most important things we can do is to simply use a feeder. So one thing that got us thinking was some research that was done down in Texas. And what they did is they fed horses in a box stall setting. They fed them small square bales. They used a feeder, and then they also just put hay on the ground. I think we can all relate that a lot of horse facilities, what do they do? They feed hay in the box stalls on the floor. They found that when they fed hay in the stall using a feeder, their waste went down to 1% versus 7% when they did not use a feeder. Because what do horses do when you don't, put, when you don't contain their hay? They step on it. If you have a gelding, what does he do? He pees on it, right? I mean, there's all these things. And we just got done talking about manure, manure management, and cleaning stalls. Hay waste is part of that. And does hay waste break down as well as other components? I don't know anything about composting. Maybe it does, maybe it doesn't. So what we did is we looked at that data and we thought, you know, that's really great. But in the upper Midwest, and maybe where you guys are, and we saw a lot of round bales on our tour yesterday, a lot of people feed round bales um, to their horses in an, outdoor, in an outdoor setting. And when we were dealing a couple years ago when hay prices were incredibly high for our area, um, people would say, round bales are more affordable, but I can't afford to buy a round bale feeder. And you'd look out at these farms and you'd see these massive amounts of waste and think, how can that be? So what we did is we had five horses in a pen. We had one feeder per paddock. Um, these were round bales of mostly orchard grass hay. They weighed about 900 pounds per bale. We removed the hay waste each morning. There was about eight of us, and I was not a very popular person because it took hours and hours to remove the amount of waste. And every fourth day, the horses were rotated between those paddocks, and we weighed them going in and weighed them coming out. So we knew the herd weight going in and the herd weight going out, so we could estimate things like percent intake, body weight, things like that. So these are the nine round bale feeders that we tested, and then of course we had a no feeder control. This is called a hay hut, and you guys can Google these and find these are all readily available. It looks like a kid's playhouse. This is called the covered cradle feeder. These sides actually collapse down and sit on the bale, so as the horse eats, it goes down. You can also prop the sides up, so if you want to limit your horse's intake, you can do that. This is just a hay sleigh. It's basically just the bottom of this feeder without the sides and the roof. This is called the hay saver. Um, you are the wasteless feeder. You actually open up the front doors, push the bale in, and then again, those sides can go down and has a covering on it. And I would assume in this environment, having a covering is probably pretty advantageous. This is really a neat one. This has taken off. This is called a cinch net. We've seen a lot of these slow feed nets really evolve in the last handful of years, and this is one made from a big round bale feeder. The openings are about an inch and three quarter by an inch and three quarter diamond shaped. And these, I guess, at the time were more of a specialty feeder. And then, of course, these round ones were very common. This is a cone feeder. They do make one for cattle that's shorter. If you get it for shorter, the horses will rub their manes from their pole to their withers, and not very many horse people appreciate that. This is just a, um, a round feeder. This is a tombstone feeder, because these are shaped like tombstones. And this is a tombstone saver where it's just pressed inside. So I know some of my colleagues are familiar with this, but just looking at them, which one would you choose? It's the end of the day. Let's have some audience participation. <laughs> which one, just yell it out, which one would you like to choose? Tombstone is cheap. Actually, it's not the cheapest, but it's one of the cheapest. That's right. Anybody else? The hay hut, Carrie knows. So when we look at the hay waste, there was a huge difference. The waste less feeder, which 
is this one right here, 5% waste. And as you go down, if they have the same little, little letter behind it, it means that even though they're numerically different, statistically they're the same. So as you go down the, the thing, you can see that the feeders range from 5 to 33% hay waste. But the take-home message, and where we gasped, how much waste is there if you do not use a feeder? 57%. We have some consultants in the, bit, in the room. I can go onto a farm and be a hero. I can save them over half of their money by one simple recommendation, and what is that? Use a feeder. I'm the hero. We looked at um, intake. They're all about 2%. With the exception of the no feeder control, there was so much waste, the horses just did not have access to that hay. And interestingly enough, we see that in the herd. This is the herd body weight in pounds. Remember, there was five horses. Essentially, those horses were wasting so much, they were essentially fasting for 24 hours that, those last, um, that last day. Um, and we reweighed those horses because we thought for sure that our scale was wrong, and we spent hours, and it was consistent across all of our pens. Here are the price of the feeders. The cheapest one was the cinch net. It's now about $189. At the time, it was 147 and you can see the most expensive was that big red covered cradle feeder. That one is very, very heavy and well made. And I know um, having a Hereford bull, I never appreciated what something could do to destroy a feeder. But I've had some people say that draft horses and other horses can be hard on things. There is a difference in quality. And of course, we only looked at these over a month period. So long term, if they sit in the manure and they're metal and they rust, how long are they going to last? They all say indefinitely, but we all know that they do have a time and point. And again, we worked with our economist, who's a wonderful man, and he did some magic on an Excel spreadsheet, and we looked at hay at $200 a ton. I have no idea what people pay for hay now, but this is actually pretty close to what it currently is in Minnesota. And we could see that they all paid for themselves within 10 months. So can a horse owner not afford to buy a round bill feeder? No. So would you, oh, here's a couple pictures, and you can just see with the hay hut, not as much waste. This is that big red covered cradle feeder that cost $3,200. Again, it's not as much waste. This was the most wasteful feeder at 33%. It was like the horses were mocking us. They would take a big bite and then just drop it on the ground. And we'd be like, no. <laughs> and then, of course, this is, the no this is that 900, round pound round 900 pound round bale on day three. Day three. So again, you can see. So would anybody like to change their answer? Which feeder would you like? The cinch net. They do recommend with cinch nets, and I think we can all agree if we have horses. No shoes, no halters, no blankets, which I know takes it off the plate for some people. We also would like to see the cinch net put inside a feeder like this just to keep the horses, because as they eat it down, it does flatten out, and they will stand on it. Um, but again, halters and blankets with any of these, you can see that there's potential to get the blankets caught. We did not see any injuries or anything like that when we had the horses. So this was a really popular study that we did, and it, and it got us thinking. Do, horses, do horse owners feed other types of hay outside other than round bales? Yeah. People feed small square bales outside all the time, right? So we thought, huh, we got this down to a science. We can do another trial looking at small square bale feeders. So we were fortunate to get funding from the American Quarter Horse Foundation. And this time we had four pens. We had three feeders and a no feeder control. We had three horses um, in each paddock. We had two feeders because they were smaller. And of course, everybody has the boss mayor who patrolled the one feeder. We wanted everybody to have access. But we essentially did the same thing. But this time we moved the horses every seven days. We had two days to allow them to acclimate. So we learned from some of our past research. And then we had five days of data collection. And here are the feeders that we used. Um, this is called a hay basket. It reminded me of like a giant fire pit. It made me want to get some marshmallows and roast them. This one was kind of a unique feeder. Um, we call it the slat feeder. It's, um, an, it's, a, it's a natural grazer feeder out of Iowa. You actually turn it upside down and it has a grate. So you turn it upside down and the grate's sitting on the bottom. You pull out a floor. You can put it in a whole bale or flakes. And then, of course, that grate goes down as they eat, so they can't fully immerse their head and pull out large amounts of hay. And then this is just your very common bunk, um, a, 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 a bunk with a feeder on the top. And you can buy these at any egg supply store. So do you think we saw a difference? Yes. 
And what feeder would you want? Audience participation is after 5 o'clock, after 8 o'clock for our East Coast friends. <laughs> what do you think? Oh, you guys are getting smarter as the day goes on. That is right. So again, we fed these horses 2.5% of the herd body weight. So we had 13% waste with our no feeder control. And of course, the feeders ranged anywhere from 1% to 5% waste. And we did see a difference. And again, our, our percent intake and our herd body weight, the changes were very, very small, very small. And really, the only reason that we saw a, a change with the slat feeders, we did not feed them at 12-hour intervals. We weren't thinking. You always learn something to add to the next time you do a project. And because they had a shorter amount of time between their morning and their evening feeding, we usually had to take some hay out. Now, in reality, is a horse owner going to empty their feeder? No, they're going to let them clean it up. So that's really probably a non-issue. You can see they were all between right around $300 to $400, and they all paid for themselves within a year. And if we look at some of the pictures, you can see we did a, try to do a really good job of keeping the area clean. Here's just hay put out on the ground. I think a lot of horse owners do this. And you can see here the horses are eating off of the bunk in the rack, pulling it down. Interestingly enough, when the horses ate out of the basket feeder, because it was such a wide feeder, they tend to eat over it. So whatever they dropped just went back into the feeder. So we kind of like that part of it. And then, of course, this one you can see there just isn't hardly any waste. Um, and it, was, it, it, it actually performed pretty well. So anybody want to change their mind? What feeder do you want? The middle one, yes. Yeah. So let's put some economics to this. And I had our, 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 our egg econ, our egg economics help us with this. So we've talked about different size and different scope. Well, we know from the small square bales in the straw from, from the Texas research, 1% hay waste with the feeder, 7% without. We know from ours, we're going to use the most efficient feeder, 1% waste, 13% waste without a feeder. And then, of course, the large round bales fed outside, we are going to have 5% waste with the feeder. There is no such thing as 0% waste. 5% waste and then 57% waste without a feeder. Let's look at your average five-horse facility. And this is hay at $250 a ton, and we're going to assume those horses are fed 100% hay. I know it's probably not realistic, but for this purpose, that's our assumptions. You can see that that person, that horse owner, let's just look at the round bales because that's the most you know, striking difference. If they use a feeder, they're only going to waste $281. If they don't use a feeder, it's over $3,000. Now let's ramp it up to a mid-sized horse farm, 15 horses. We're going, to we're going to multiply that by 15. Now if I'm a consultant and I'm at a 50-horse farm, what am I going to charge them to tell them to use a feeder? $32,000, because that's what I'm going to save them. So look at that. Even when you're feeding in a box stall, if you're feeding 50 horses at a barn and putting that hay on the ground, you are wasting almost $4,000 a year. And I'm expecting in some parts of the country, your hay is much more expensive than 250 bucks a ton. So using a feeder is really expensive. But we're at the Waste to Worth conference, aren't we? Let's talk about some manure, because what does that hay eventually become that's wasted? What does it become? Manure. And thank goodness I grew up on a Wisconsin dairy farm, because I can figure out how to calculate this. So. We have our hay priced at 250 bucks a ton. We have four and a half tons per year. You can look at custom, every university has custom rates for farmers. This one happens to come from Wisconsin. They say that it's $109 an hour for the average farmer to custom rates to load his manure spreader and then spread that manure spreader with a back end spreader. And he can spread, a, he or she, I should know that, he or she can spread 11 tons of manure an hour. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at that animal and how much they're wasting. So here again, let's use small square bales. We're feeding them outdoors. It's going to cost us just 2 bucks a year if we only have five horses and we're using a feeder. But let's go over here to without a feeder and 50 horses. We're going to have an additional cost of not only the wasted hay, but we have about $300 in just spreading that wasted hay back onto the field. And is it just going to be hay? No. What else is it going to be? Mud and dirt and manure and other things. 
And of course, the round bales without a feeder, that's our biggest, that's our biggest cost. Those horse owners are gonna spend an extra 1,200 bucks a year just by removing that wasted hay. So not only did they waste $32,000 in hay, they also now have to pay somebody 1,200 bucks to spread it out, to take it out. So the conclusion I think is pretty simple. To reduce hay, hay waste during feeding, one thing, use a feeder. When I have, when I do these presentations to horse owners, I make them raise their right hand and swear. I promise to use a feeder when I feed my horses. Using a feeder results in less money spent purchasing hay and also the re waste removal. And a lot of people forget about that aspect. They forget that it costs to have somebody bring in their skid loader, bring in their tractor and spreader, scoop it up, take it out, and do something with it. So lots of collaborators on these projects, lots of um, great people. And again, on our horse website, um, we have nice fact sheets at, with both of our feeder research, with pictures and all the tables that I shared with you guys. If you just Google University of Minnesota horse, it pops up, and we have other resources.